Thanks very much. I'm Fred Kemp, President and CEO of the Atlantic Council. Uh, uh, and I'm always pleased to welcome people. Uh, and we have had quite a bit of demand uh, for uh, dinner at this single table. Uh, we had keep, kept having to make the single table larger, Mr. <laughs> Minister, uh, because you are such a popular man uh, in, in, this, in this town. A uh, great friend of the United States, a great friend of the Atlantic Council, and, and, uh, and in representing your country and your country's interests in the world, one of the most gifted diplomats I've known uh, in my uh, life as a journalist and now as President of the Atlantic Council. And we're really honored to have you here. Uh, we're also very pleased to welcome the Under Secretary of State for Economic Growth, Energy, and Environment. I didn't know you had all those titles. Uh, <laughs> you accumulate them. <laughs> uh, Robert Formats, who's also going to make some and who's also going to make some brief remarks and uh, congratulations on just an incredible run in that uh, position as Undersecretary Bob. been fantastic. Um, uh, as all of you know in this room, because you have a relationship with Central Asia and Kazakhstan, uh, this is one of the uh, most crucial uh, geopolitical, geoeconomic actors in its region with ripples and ramifications throughout the world. Uh, as I had various meetings with the ambassador, we kept comparing the neighborhood that Kazakhstan lived in compared to the neighborhood that the United States lived in. And let's just say, you have a somewhat more challenging uh, <laughs> neighborhood uh, the, uh, than, than do we. Uh, we have a long track record of work and engagement on Kazakhstan uh, on issues ranging from transatlantic security, economic in integration, energy security. Uh, that includes a 2010 task force that was headed by now Secretary of Defense, uh, Chuck Hagel, uh, then our chairman, a 2012 conference on 20 years of U.S.-Kazakh relations, numerous articles, analysis, and reports on the country and the region. We, we've made it our business uh, uh, under the Eurasia Center and its very capable team led by Ambassador Ross Wilson uh, to uh, to not do one report, one conference, uh, uh, one-off dinner, but really to say this is a relationship that's worth spending some time on. This region is one that uh, uh, officials in Washington too often lose focus on, and so we see it really as part of our role at the Atlantic Council to, to place continued interest and continued work on this including now uh, a new effort where we're going to be cooperating with Kazakhstan in something we call the Eurasia Trade and Economic Development Initiative. Uh, uh, this is uh, taking place uh, in the framework of a wide-ranging new project launched earlier by our Eurasia Center focused on Central Asia and the Caucasus that aims to connect these regions more fully uh, with the transatlantic uh, community. Uh, our trade and development initiative aims to bolster trade ties with and within and across the region and to promote strategies that ensure this modern day Silk Road produces jobs and prosperity for Central Asia and the Caucasus, Afghanistan and the regions around them. Uh, there is a great danger uh, uh, that uh, as we lost interest once before in this region uh, after the end of an Afghan war, that something like that could happen again and we just think the costs are too high uh, of doing that and the opportunities are too great in staying there. And so for both reasons, we're going to try to do as much intellectual thinking and advocacy around uh, some very creative thought about uh, uh, this initiative. Um, let me just recognize a few of the many distinguished guests here tonight before I pass to the, the minister and then after the minister gives a couple of remarks to the Undersecretary. I'm very uh, grateful to the Chairman of the Atlantic Council's uh, Brent Scowcroft Center on International Security, uh, Jim Jones, General Jim Jones, former National Security Advisor, Supreme Allied Commander of Europe for being here. It's always an honor to have you here, sir. Uh, uh, and uh, a little bit later, I think Dr. Uh, Brzezinski will also be here, a uh, member of the Council's International Advisory Board, and then Council Board Directors, Ambassador Richard Byrd, Ambassador Julie Finley, uh, Frank Kramer, uh, 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 one of the most important people on our board and also at the same time a distinguished fellow working on many of these issues. And then Alan Spence, 
a, a wonderful member of the board who's very close to Kazakhstan, has been for years, who's flown in from London. I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, your presence demonstrates just how deep the Atlantic Council engagement and commitment is to Kazakhstan and Central Asia. And uh, I don't think Congressman Ed Whitfield is here yet, but he will be here uh, uh, for the dinner. So we're honored he'll join us as well. Um, I now have the pleasure of introducing Foreign Minister Erlan Idrisov, uh, who's known very to many in this room based on his service as Kazakhstan's ambassador here in 2007-2012. He came as a former uh, Kazakh Foreign Minister, and he left to reprise that role uh, for his country. He also served as Kazakhstan's ambassador to the United Kingdom, the Kingdom of Sweden, the Kingdom of of Norway, he seems to like kingdoms. <laughs> uh, uh, Foreign Minister Grisov was recently part of the task force, uh, and this is quite important because if, if you've seen since uh, 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 Ambassador uh, Grisov has again become Foreign Minister Grisov, you've seen all sorts of interesting initiatives taking place in Kazakhstan uh, in international affairs, um, uh, not least of which have been the meetings regarding Iran in the future of Iran and its relationship with the outside world. Uh, but he's also been part of a task force that helped broker a Kazakh-Uzbek strategic partnership agreement to expand cooperation on trade, economics, culture, and transportation, and in the political arena between these two leading countries of Central Asia. I mention that because this agreement is a terrific example of the type of cooperation our new initiative intends to promote support and hopefully interact with. Uh, and then after he speaks, we'll turn to the Under Secretary of State, Secretary uh, Robert Hormatz, and he's done a lot uh, to shape U.S. Uh, policy in the region, of course, far beyond. Uh, Bob was formerly Vice Chairman of Goldman Sachs International and served as Assistant Secretary of State for Economic and Business Affairs, Ambassador and Deputy U.S. Trade Representative and Senior Deputy Assistant Secretary of State uh, for economic, uh, uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary for Econ Econ Economy and Business. Um, uh, he served as senior staff member for international economic affairs on the National Security Council, where he was senior economic advisor to Dr. Henry Kissinger, General Ben Skokoff, and Zbigniew Brzezinski. I'll just say that I've been stealing his ideas for years. Uh, there was actually a ban on me at the uh, Wall Street Journal for a while, quoting him in articles because they thought I was over quoting him. Uh, but, uh, but he's one of the most original and creative and strategic thinkers in the U.S. government. Our plan tonight is to have the minister speak and then ask Under Secretary Hormas to say a few words. And this part of the evening is on the record, and then the rest of the evening will be off the record. Mr. Minister. Dear Fred, thank you very much, and uh, I'm really uh, heartened and warmed by uh, your very kind words. Uh, uh, let me uh, also uh, say, say uh, how much I'm uh, very much pleased by uh, seeing all of you. It's always uh, good to come back uh, to your home, so I feel myself very much at home in Washington, D.C., uh, even uh, uh, with this uh, sticky July weather, <laughs> but still it feels uh, home, you know. <laughs> and I, I'd like to, uh, of course, uh, uh, respect uh, uh, the honor of uh, the presence of uh, General Jim Jones, uh, uh, Under Secretary Hormats, uh, uh, many of the uh, excellencies uh, and uh, 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 ambassadors, uh, dear friends. Uh, I uh, 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 will tell you one secret that uh, I wanted when I was leaving Washington D.C. I wanted to miss uh, uh, Washington uh, very much, but I didn't have time to miss Washington. Uh, events were so uh, 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 numerous uh, in... Uh, yes, uh, let me also recognize and uh, <laughs> thank you to the Dr. Thank you very much, thank you. Um, I uh, don't want to make a uh, long speech. My message uh, uh, is uh, very uh, uh, brief, but uh, very clear. Kazakhstan uh, is... Uh, a long-term partner of uh, the United States. Uh, we believe that we share many goals uh, in our part of the world and uh, globally. Uh, uh, in 21 years of our partnership, uh, we have built a very strong relationship uh, based on uh, shared goals and interests, 
uh, we uh, value the support of the United States in uh, helping us to build a viable uh, society, a uh, strong economy. Uh, we uh, continue to make uh, our strides uh, towards uh, uh, our big ambitious uh, goals. Uh, one uh, message I brought uh, today uh, in my meetings uh, the State Department, the White House business community, uh, the Ministry of Defense, uh, Department of Defense, uh, USTR is very simple. Kazakhstan, uh, uh, I think, uh, matured enough uh, to open up a new page uh, in its uh, history. We have uh, announced uh, uh, last December a plan to uh, uh, grow uh, uh, into a uh, developed nation uh, by the year 2050. We have a strategy in 2050 uh, by which we want uh, uh, to firmly see ourselves in the top 30 uh, most developed countries in the world. Of course, uh, that will take a lot of uh, uh, homework, uh, both economically, on which we'll continue to focus, but most importantly, of, uh, in develop development of other aspects of life, because it's time uh, building and enhancing uh, new institutions, building and enhancing uh, new culture uh, of doing things uh, in uh, Kazakhstan, uh, focusing on uh, educating young generation of Kazakhs. So uh, the important uh, uh, thing to observe in Kazakhstan uh, is that uh, we are on the verge of uh, the uh, founding father's generation uh, in Kazakhstan and handing over the country to the young generation. This generation uh, is the one uh, which uh, does have uh, 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 a historic memory of living in the Soviet days. Uh, they are differently educated. Most of them are educated in uh, Western countries. Uh, they have different uh, outlooks and instincts. Uh, they are the bearers of new uh, culture of which we are talking. So uh, we have uh, laid down the pounding bricks uh, uh, into the uh, emerging building of uh, young nation of Kazakhstan. And uh, we are proud that uh, we can uh, announce ambitious uh, goals of uh, developing uh, into a strong nation by the year 2050 and we educated uh, a strong generation, young generation of new Kazakhstanis uh, who will be able to take uh, the task of uh, uh, ensuring the continued growth, uh, sustained growth of uh, our country. Uh, another important, uh, of course, uh, event is that uh, we found ourselves uh, in, in a very exciting uh, neighborhood. Uh, there are many interesting developments uh, going around. We have the fifth generation of Chinese leaders uh, we had uh, already an opportunity of uh, uh, formal meetings with each a new Chinese leader uh, in a very nice gesture uh, of uh, showing respect to the uh, rising uh, nation. Uh, the new chairman of China will be, uh, visit Kazakhstan uh, in September. Uh, we have uh, a new platform of uh, dialogue with uh, our Russian neighbors. Uh, we are building an uh, economic integration platform with them which is called the uh, Customs Union or Eurasian Economic uh, Integration. Uh, we believe that uh, the strong economic uh, interest, the foundation of uh, economic interest uh, will uh, um, allow us to build a beautiful uh, uh, building uh, in Eurasia of economic uh, cooperation. Of course, uh, 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 we uh, try to explain to uh, uh, external observers that uh, there is no point of return to old Soviet days. Uh, that's uh, completely uh, uh, out of question. We will focus on uh, creating new opportunities for ourselves uh, economic, in economic areas, in business areas, investment and trade. Kazakhstan is uh, the largest landlocked country in the world, therefore it desperately needs uh, unimpeded accesses to uh, all four sides of uh, the wind. Uh, so we want to turn uh, the excitement of our neighborhood uh, into uh, new opportunities for Kazakhstan, be it China or be it Russia. If you look to the south, this is uh, another area of opportunity. There, uh, we strongly want to continue to partner with the United States uh, to bring those opportunities uh, uh, to the benefits of the nations who live in that part of the world. Therefore, the topic uh, we chose for our uh, uh, collaboration with the Atlantic Council is trade and transit uh, and turning uh, the old Silk Road into the new uh, 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 route of uh, commercial and business opportunities. I think uh, this is a very 
good message. Uh, uh, we would be absolutely happy to partner with the Atlantic Council to bring attention to these uh, important opportunities. The United States has a historic mission in our part of the world uh, to help uh, sustain, uh, support our independence, uh, our uh, sustained growth, uh, both economically and politically. Uh, we have succeeded uh, a lot in uh, economic achievements, uh, which is testified by the external accounts uh, of uh, observers like the World Bank, uh, EBRD, uh, who register significant uh, economic growth uh, uh, in Kazakhstan. We want now to match this uh, with uh, a similar uh, uh, growth in uh, viable political institutions of the society, uh, enhancing the rule of law, enhancing and uh, improving the governance. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, we'll continue to focus on education because the best investment we uh, discover for ourselves is the investment uh, into human capital. So these are the policies uh, which are completely supported by uh, our partners uh, in the West, uh, uh, US being the leader. The new development is that we also announce our serious uh, approach uh, and policy uh, on greening our economy. Uh, we are frank, uh, we are very frank with ourselves. Uh, we say that uh, we are very brown uh, so far, uh, and it, it will take a lot of time for us to be uh, really green, but uh, we announced this intention, and uh, we think that we have enough uh, wisdom, enough courage, uh, and enough uh, resources to uh, achieve to the goal of uh, becoming healthy and green. Uh, this is yet another area uh, of our partnership with, with the United States, and uh, we uh, want to enhance our energy uh, partnership dialogue with the United States by adding uh, these new opportunities uh, in alternative sources. So uh, the platform uh, on which Kazakhstan and the United States uh, uh, partner is very wide. We have very full agenda. Uh, uh, we have uh, a very uh, active uh, uh, set of tools uh, through which we keep the dialogue. Last year we have established a strategic partnership commission between Kazakhstan and the United States. Uh, I hope tomorrow, uh, if the family situation of Secretary Kerry will improve, uh, we'll be able to formally announce uh, the co-chairmanship of this commission uh, by, uh, uh, by us. Uh, we are happy that uh, we are marking the 10th anniversary of our energy partnership. Uh, Dan Forneman, uh, a good, very good friend of Kazakhstan, is the co-chair on, on, on the U.S. side, on our side. Uh, uh, we have uh, recently established, two weeks ago, a uh, science and technology commission. Uh, uh, Assistant Secretary uh, Karen Jones traveled to Kazakhstan and uh, launched this uh, uh, Science and Technology Commission. And this fall, we hope to open up yet another commission uh, with the support of the USTR uh, and Economic Block uh, uh, over here of the uh, Trade and Investment Commission. Uh, so we have many opportunities and platforms for dialogue. We hope that this dialogue uh, will uh, uh, deepen in its quality. Uh, U.S. Uh, is wanted everywhere in the world, but I think uh, 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 the area of the uh, ancient Silk Road, uh, uh, great mass of land which is called Eurasia, uh, uh, I think needs uh, a very healthy, meaningful, long-term uh, 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 moral, physical, uh, political, and economic presence of the United States, which will benefit, will bring benefits. Uh, to our part of the world, to the neighbors of that part of the world, and uh, to the United States, of course. Uh, therefore, we uh, want uh, to sustain those opportunities uh, for our partnership. I think uh, the dialogue uh, which we maintain uh, is improving, and uh, this type of events are showing that there is a growing understanding in the United States that uh, we need each other. Uh, you, of course, uh, as I said, uh, are wanted every, everywhere in the world, but. Uh, you have enough resources and wisdom uh, uh, to be present everywhere when, when, where you are needed. Afghanistan is a big challenge. Uh, Iran uh, is another uh, uh, situation uh, which needs to be attended. Uh, we uh, uh, systemically and uh, 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 with good intentions uh, try to uh, give, uh, to make our contribution to bring normalcy to Afghanistan and. Uh, 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 
normalization of relations with, uh, with uh, Iran. We hosted two rounds of Iran talks. We hope that after Iran in relations, there will be many more opportunities. And we'll, uh, we'll try to continue to play our modest role uh, in promoting uh, peace opportunities uh, in our part of the world. Therefore, I'm very pleased uh, that uh, there is a growing sense of uh, uh, a better understanding of the needs of the United States in different parts of the world. Kazakhstan and Eurasia is the bridge between uh, Europe and Asia. We are next to the Caspian region. Uh, we are next to uh, uh, emerging uh, huge market of India, uh, uh, not to speak about uh, opportunities offered by China. Therefore, uh, I think uh, the axis of uh, partnership and friendship, which has been, has been established by our presidents 21 years ago, uh, uh, should be supported uh, by all means, and I think that we have enough resources and uh, enough uh, uh, opportunities to uh, sustain that relationship. Atlantic Council is one of these uh, tools uh, which helps uh, both sides uh, to better understand each other, better understand the priorities of uh, each other's growth. Uh, you are an older nation, uh, we are a younger nation. Uh, we have to be, but we are on the same uh, path, road, I told uh, uh, today uh, that uh, uh, we have only one small difference. Uh, uh, we are on the same road uh, to development. The difference is only that we made 21 steps, and you have done 237 steps. So uh, we will keep uh, going along this road, and uh, I will try to uh, not repeat uh, mistakes uh, and learn uh, from the examples of others. And, uh, of course, uh, our partnership and relationship with uh, the United States is one good example of this type. Thank you very much, and uh, once again, welcome, and thank you, Atlantic Council, for supporting this event. Well, first of all, um, let me thank Fred for inviting me to speak, and uh, let me also say what a pleasure it is to have the opportunity to uh, join um, Foreign Minister, I used to know as Ambassador Rysoff when he was here, uh, who has done such a great deal of work to uh, further the interests of his own country, uh, but also to strengthen ties between the United States and Kazakhstan. As many of you know, uh, when he was Ambassador here, he gained the reputation as being one of the most active ambassadors here in Washington. He was everywhere. If you ever wanted to know what was going on in Washington, you didn't read the Washington Post, you asked the ambassador because he was very active on the Hill and very active uh, in the executive branch. And also went around the, the country talking about Kazakhstan and what he was doing and what he was doing and how the two countries, the United States and Kazakhstan, could work together. And uh, if you look at uh, the relationship between our two countries today and the strength of that relationship, it is largely due to the very active work you did back when you were here as ambassador and now you're doing as uh, foreign minister. You brought our countries closer together and you've identified numerous areas in which we can become still closer together and some of them are identified here on this very elegant chart that you've uh, provided. Uh, one of the accomplishments was the strategic partnership dialogue that you have initiated and one that tomorrow I think is going to hold its second round of uh, dialogue discussions to review progress in many areas that define our bilateral relationship and to attempt to chart a path forward which will further deepen our cooperation. Uh, the high level of this dialogue reflects not only Kazakhstan's important role in Central Asia uh, and the world, but also the Foreign Minister's tireless work in building a deep and broad partnership uh, between the two countries so that we can work together on common endeavors, not just bilaterally, but internationally. We cooperate on a wide range of issues uh, and many issues that we were not uh, working on that closely a decade or so ago. We work together very closely on non-proliferation, on energy, as you've indicated, and I'll discuss in further detail, on Afghanistan, which is obviously very important to both of our countries, and regional economic development. Um, your country has become, in many ways, the region's economic powerhouse, largely because of the forward-looking vision of your president and of your government and of the hard work and efforts of yourself and your colleagues. 
um, your president's decision to invite major oil companies to develop the country's vast hydrocarbon resources in the 1990s was a defining moment for the country uh, because it led to a close interaction with a number of American companies that are playing a greater and greater role in your country's energy future and um, helping those countries to participate in the energy sector in a very formative stage of that process, which I think also is, is very important because that type of cooperation, I think, with the companies bringing in new technology and new ideas can be very helpful to Kazakhstan. You're also a, lead, a leading destination for other kinds of American investment. American investment in Kazakhstan totaled $16.5 billion uh, over the last 20 years, and you've been very forward-looking in defining uh, your economic vision for the future, which I believe will attract even more uh, foreign investment from the United States and other countries around the world. Uh, you're also aiming, and you pointed this out, um, to make yourself a green economy, uh, which I think is extremely important. It's something the United States uh, wants to work with your country to help you realize this, uh, this initiative and this goal. And this involves, among other things, a transition away from coal for the majority of your energy by 2030, and aiming for more than half of your energy to come from non-hydrocarbon sources by 2050, which is a very important goal. It's an important goal when you think about the future of the country, um, reduce reliance on coal, much better environment for the people, much healthier environment, and a much nicer environment for encouraging uh, foreign investment and people to come from other parts of the world to do that. We're excited about our growing cooperation in this area. As you mentioned, uh, Mr. Minister, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, my colleague Carrie Ann Jones, who is Assistant Secretary of State for Oceans, Environment, and Scientific Affairs, um, traveled to Astana to participate in the first high-level discussion on enhancing uh, science and technology cooperation between our two countries uh, and focusing very heavily on these environmental issues, which we regard as very important. And I think this will set the stage for further cooperation. During these meetings, we agreed to establish three very important working groups to continue cooperation in this area. These uh, will work to support your plans for a transition to the green economy and your plans to host the World Expo in 2017 with a theme of energy for the future which is obviously an important theme, and help, helping green energy to become a major part of that is an important area for cooperation. We also concluded a memorandum of understanding under which USAID will provide assistance to the Ministry of the Environment to establish a low emission, emissions development strategy. Earlier I mentioned our joint collaboration on Afghanistan. You've demonstrated a commitment to Afghanistan through the provision of assistance, including a commitment to help support the financing of the Afghan National Security Forces, as well as by advancing the new Silk Road vision of greater regional economic connectivity and integration, something the United States is very uh, heavily involved in. I and some of my colleagues who are now here in this room uh, have worked together on um, and deeply believe in. It's, it's, it's not only a vision, um, which it is to a degree, but it's actually becoming a reality. And we believe that through greater trade, greater commerce, people-to-people -people linkages, Central Asia can move from being one of the least economically integrated areas of the world to one that serves an important hub for global commerce, and Kazakhstan could play, and I believe will play, a very important role in that. With our support and your support, the countries of the region um, and many of our partners in the area are building improved railways, and roads, and power lines, and uh, other sources of uh, movement of people and ideas and products that will connect the region still further. And this has begun to re reintegrate the region, and regional energy cooperation is an important part of that. Um, there are also a number of areas of cooperation that are important in such areas as uh, customs cooperation, law enforcement cooperation, entrepreneurs working with one another, students uh, crossing the border and 
going to school in other parts of the region. And your leadership uh, has been vital to all these areas. In April, uh, you hosted the Heart of Asia Ministerial in al um, as part of the, the Istanbul process. Uh, Kazakhstan, along with uh, Pakistan, chairs a working group on regional disaster management. And both countries have been supporting business-to-business uh, -business cooperation with Afghanistan. In May, Turkmenistan and Kazakhstan, as you mentioned, um, have uh, worked together on a number of areas. And one of them is to develop a rail link that crosses the border between the countries. And this will significantly expand regional trade by lowering the cost uh, and reducing the shipping times between the two countries, moving goods uh, through the region and will provide your country with access to the Persian Gulf uh, and therefore enable it to have greater opportunities for trade in the region and across various oceans. And that will lead to increased trade with the Middle East, uh, South Asia, as well as Southeast Asia. There's still a lot of work to be done, but I'm enormously heartened by the progress we have made uh, by growing regional consensus around and ownership of the new Silk Road. Every time we have an IMF meeting, the spring meetings, and the fall meetings, I chair a group of finance ministers and others who develop ideas to further the, the vision of the new Silk Road, and Kazakhstan always plays a very key role in that area. And uh, therefore, I simply want to say that this vision is something that we look to you for continued leadership on, and we value that leadership enormously. So let me say again, uh, Mr. Minister, how glad we are that you're here, how important we see this relationship uh, in the current environment as being very important, but also as you continue to develop your plans uh, for greater regional cooperation and for economic growth to become one of the top 30 economic powers in the world, we want to be your partners, American companies want to be your partners, and we greatly value your leadership, your vision. We thank you for coming. We think the dialogue that we're going to have tomorrow will enhance our relationship enormously. We value the relationship greatly, and we look forward to future meetings and future opportunities to work together. So thanks for visiting your second home, Washington, and thanks for being such a good friend and such, a, such an inspirational leadership. Thank you.